Welcome back. It is Thursday, and that means Aki Analysis for Animators. And today I'm going to talk about Stranger Things season three, and this is part two. That's right, part two out of three. Why waste time? Let's go straight to the shots. All right, first one is this, where Harrington tells him that he's going to sneak. <laughs> it's so good. Sneak into the place. Now, why am I showing you this? Usually you want to avoid acting out words. It's a bit too on the nose, but if you do something like this, you might as well do something like that. It's gonna be really fun to animate with the fingers there, but it's one of those moments where he's exaggerating on purpose. He's trying to convince the people I love their reactions, but also like his little tiny little head shake there. It was sneak. So good, Look, great little pause, great overall pose. That means nothing. <laughs> I just like this moment. So if you do want to act that words, think about a moment where, well, what could I do to give this that an extra little funny moment? It's not just me, you know, if I say wait, I look at the watch, stuff like that, so it's not overused. I think this is a very creative way of adding the sneaking aspect to the shot. Next up, within the same set, you have this character. And why am I showing you this? I'm a big fan of using space in a scene. So usually you have your camera, usually a locked off camera, and your character is either here or waist up. And in a lot of animation shots from students, you have, you know, this arm gesturing and the character is completely locked. There's no real contrast in usage of space. So I would highly recommend that you use at least left and right. But if you can and why not, go back and forth in and out of the scene, use depth. Now I know this is more complicated to do, but I, you can also use that as an emphasis in terms of the character's lip sync and the character's emotion and whatever she wants to say in this case. So for her, she needs to go, she goes back, but she wants to make a point. So now she stops and goes back forward. Again, it adds emphasis. It's also more interesting visually. And when she's done, fast forward here, she turns away and leaves. Now, again, I know this is very complex, but so you have a backwards walk with a stop, change of direction, walking forward. And at the end, walk backwards with a turn and beginning into a run. It's all very, very complex, but overall to me, much more interesting than just a character that just stands and doesn't really move. And then, you know, with IK legs bolted down and it just adds more contrast, more visual interest. And I would at least consider something like that if you have a set that has room. Now within that whole sequence, I love this here. And you know, I love props. I love this and what he does with it, right? He goes, hey, don't do this, it's gross. I love this moment, oh, it's great. Just seeing this tells me he's very confident, he's very arrogant about his job and his abilities, but it also shows that he is a master of using this, he's done this before. He just adds a general attitude. I love that he does this without looking, it's all very casual. It's just an added cool factor to the character and again, using the prop in an interesting way if you already have a prop. Now, speaking of prop, here's this, where this character, who does not like this character at all, comes in and does this. So it doesn't have to be a prop that you're holding. This could be something that's part of the environment, but this adds one more layer of, I don't like this place. I don't respect you. I'm going to do whatever I can to annoy you. Just an added extra moment that is just animation wise is not huge as your arm up and down, but it gives you an extra attitude. And this continues here where he's about to grab this. Now look what he does to this place here. And uh, it's just that had a thing of, I don't like you. I want to show you how much I hate you. It's just, again, this idle thing with prop. It's just an extra visual cue of how much I hate you. Just that added attitude is great. And even at the end, when he has the rubber band here, you might argue, well, the scene is done. She exits, the lip sync is done. You could end the shot now, or you could add this. Now I know this adds an extra shot. You might extend or overextend the shot. It might be okay to just end the shot right there. But again, if you have a prop and it's something that maybe he picked up off an office area, this could be a funny added extra moment. Again, to add character to this, to really emphasize, I don't like you. And it's a very you know big visual cue. Of, Boom, I hate you. And I'm not done with props because this time it's this moment here. So your character might not have a gun. I mean, your character might be holding, you know, I don't know, a laundry basket and like something else, detergent. Well, I don't know, and maybe they need to do laundry in a room that's dark. But what I like about this is that because the flashlight is in his mouth, because he has to hold it like this, A, it nixes your lip sync, it becomes more pantomime-y. And imagine maybe a character has to look at two specific spots in terms of light. They need to put light everywhere. That to me, gives you an opportunity to do some more exaggerated looking around and more exaggerated pantomiming and gesturing because of the prop, and the, in this case, a flashlight in his mouth. 
And to me, it's a bit more interesting than having a flashlight in his hands and it's doing something that's a bit more generic and something that's a bit more expected. Now, going back to environments, if you watched my previous FNAs, you know that I'm a big fan of putting people into environments and different sets. A surface that's uneven like this will change your pose, it will give you asymmetry, it will give them something to do in terms of changing the path and not making it too even and too normal or just too, again, like I said before, too expected. And the same thing with stuff like here, right? So because this is in his way, he has to bring up the arm, puts it out of the way, you get past it. This already changes your pose. It changes the, you know, it takes away from the twinning. It adds more contrast to the pose and asymmetry. And it's not something huge, but again, it adds more interest and it puts the character also in a scene where the character interacts. Like the, the character is part of the scene. They live in there. It's not something where I just added props, but it might as well be an empty room because the characters don't acknowledge the set, the heat, the light, or the environment. To me, this just brings them all together. It just makes it a bit more, it feels more like they live in that environment. This one to me is all about gestures where you want to add one more thing to a scene. So this is where he says, wait. You can see how he mouse says, wait. And you might argue, well, he's acting out words. Sure, but every now and then, especially live action, it's a bit more common, but you can have wait. And this is your scene. You know, maybe this is your lip sync. It's a very short assignment or exercise you want to do. Character says wait. But what I like about this is that is how he ends it. So this could be a bit more generic, but you can add one more thing to give your character a bit more quirkiness or something a bit more special. What is she doing? I love it. She has always some great expressions and faces there. But I love just this. I love that this becomes we add this kind of generic into something that's a bit more specific with this character. And speaking of hands, here's this moment where Harrington stops the door and boop, and coming in. So I'm showing you this because even if you shot, it would just be here, right? You start, not this, but here. The door would come to close and bam, you got that moment of surprise, but also the contrast of timing is cool. You got quick pause, right? There's nothing going on here. And then a slow entrance. So it's not quick, quick, quick. It all has different sense of timing there. So watch this kind of slow, quick stop, pause, and slow coming in. Also from a shot point of view, it's kind of interesting. You come in here, you can show a bit broader mechanics. You can imagine maybe the character is standing to so show a bit more of your character and then cut to this where it's a bit more close up and you can show off some facial lip sync or pantomime. And this is all pretty short. So this to me would also be interesting in terms of cutting up the shot and showing different things, different skill sets in terms of the animation. But anyway, going back to this, I just love the timing. It's very animated, Bing! pause and coming through. It's great contrast. And boom, that is it, part two. There's part three coming, but for now, that is it. And if you like this, you know the spiel, like and subscribe if you want to. I upload almost every day, so hit that bell button for all the notifications in case you wanna get notified. And as I always say, if you feel like this is interesting, hmm, I would like to apply this to my own shots. I have a workshop, link in the description. You can sign up at any time. You can start whenever you want and we can work together on your shots. I mean, I can look at your shots, I can critique shots, we can have a discussion about your shots, all that good stuff. My workshops are always ready for you if you decide to sign up. Other than that, that's it. I will see you next week for part three.